All right, everyone, let's dive into the exciting world of financial statement analysis. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, oh great, more numbers and formulas, but hang in there. By the end of this session, you'll see just how powerful these tools are in evaluating a company's financial health. Whether you're an aspiring analyst, an investor, or someone just curious about how businesses tick, understanding financial statements is like having a backstage pass to the financial performance of any company. So grab your pens, get comfortable, and let's get started. First things first, why do we even bother with financial analysis? Well, it's all about decision making. Imagine you're an investor trying to decide whether to buy stock in a company, or maybe you're a creditor wondering if a company can pay back its loans. Financial analysis is your go-to tool for answering these questions. Debt investors, for example, are laser focused on whether a company can pay interest and principal on its debts. On the other hand, equity investors are all about profitability and the value per share. Simply put, financial analysis helps stakeholders understand a company's financial health and its future potential. Now let's walk through a step-by-step -step framework that guides us through financial statement analysis. This is like our game plan to make sure we're covering all our bases. Articulate the purpose and context of the analysis. Before you start crunching numbers, you need to know why you're doing it. Are you evaluating a potential investment or maybe assessing the performance of a subsidiary? Whatever the case, understanding the context helps you focus on the right data. Suppose you're analyzing whether a company's stock is undervalued. Your purpose is to determine if it's a good buy, so your analysis will center on profitability, market conditions, and growth potential. Collect input data. This is where you gather all the raw materials. You'll need financial statements, but don't stop there. Industry data, economic indicators, and even news reports can give you a fuller picture. Always look at the broader environment. If you're analyzing a tech company, for instance, check out the latest trends in tech and how they might impact the company. Process data. Now it's time to roll up your sleeves and get to work. This involves calculating ratios, forecasting growth rates, and preparing common size financial statements. Think of this as turning raw data into useful information. If you're comparing a company's profitability over time, you might prepare a common size income statement to spot trends easily. Analyze and interpret the data. Once you have your processed data, the next step is to interpret it. What do the numbers tell you? Are there any red flags? Or maybe some hidden strengths? Imagine you're analyzing a company with declining revenue but increasing profit margins. This could suggest cost-cutting measures are in place, great for short-term profitability, but may be a concern for long-term growth. Develop and communicate conclusions and recommendations. Here's where you tie it all together. You'll develop answers to the questions you set out to explore and communicate your findings. Remember, transparency is key. Always disclose any limitations or risks in your analysis. Keep your audience in mind. If you're presenting to senior management, they might prefer a summary with key takeaways, while a detailed report might be more suitable for fellow analysts. Follow-up, don't just stop once you've delivered your report, Financial analysis is an ongoing process. Periodic reviews help you validate your original conclusions and adjust them if necessary. If you recommended buying a stock based on projected earnings growth, you'll want to revisit that recommendation as new financial statements are released to ensure the company is on track. The scope of financial statement analysis is pretty broad, but it boils down to evaluating a company's past, current, and prospective financial position. 
you're looking at how well the company generates profits and cash flows and how it might do so in the future. Think of it this way. If you're an equity analyst, you're interested in long-term earning power. Creditors, on the other hand, are more concerned with a company's assets and liquidity. Can they meet their short-term obligations? Let's say you're assessing a company's credit risk. If their current ratio is below one, that might be a red flag. They don't have enough assets to cover their liabilities, which could mean trouble for creditors. Regulations play a huge role in how companies report their financials. Regulatory bodies like the SEC in the U.S. make sure companies follow specific accounting standards and securities regulations. This uh, is important because it ensures the information you're analyzing is reliable and consistent. When you're reviewing a U.S. company's financials, you'll likely look at forms like the 10-K, which provides a comprehensive summary of a company's performance. These forms are gold mines for analysts because they contain everything from financial statements to management's discussion and analysis. But remember, not all regulatory bodies are the same. In the U.S., the Financial Accounting Standards Board, FASB, sets the rules, while in many other countries, it's the International Accounting Standards Board, IASB. So be aware of the differences, especially if you're comparing companies across borders. Speaking of borders, let's talk about the two major accounting standards, IFRS and US GAAP. While these standards are becoming more aligned, there are still key differences. For instance, under US GAAP, companies can use LEFO, last in first out, for inventory valuation, but IFRS prohibits it. Also, IFRS allows the reversal of inventory write-downs under certain conditions, while US GAAP does not. If you're analyzing a company that reports under IFRS, and they've reversed an inventory write-down, it could boost their reported income. But under US GAAP, that wouldn't be allowed, so you need to adjust your analysis accordingly. As analysts, it's crucial to stay updated on these differences because they can significantly impact your valuation and investment decisions. Besides financial statements and regulatory filings, there are other valuable sources of information. Earnings calls, industry reports, press releases, and even social media can provide insights that aren't always obvious from the numbers alone. Let's say you're analyzing a company, and during an earnings call, the CEO mentions plans for a major acquisition. That's something you might not see in the financials until the deal is done, but it could have significant implications for your analysis. Always listen to what management is saying and what they're not saying. Sometimes the tone and context can tell you more than the actual words. And there you have it. Financial statement analysis might seem like a daunting task, but with the right framework and tools, it's entirely manageable. Remember, it's not just about crunching numbers, it's about understanding the story those numbers tell. As you prepare for your CFA exam, focus on mastering this process. It's not just about passing the exam, it's about equipping yourself with the skills you need to make informed financial decisions in the real world. So keep practicing, stay curious, and don't be afraid to dig deeper into the numbers. Good luck and happy analyzing.